What's going on? Brennan Mejia here. Today, I want to actually break down a little bit of the differences between the American toys for Power Rangers and the Japanese versions. Now, in case you didn't know, in Japan, it's not actually called Power Rangers. It comes from something called Super Sentai, which Power Rangers basically takes footage from Super Sentai and then splices it with new original footage with American actors to make Power Rangers that you all love and know. So today we're gonna actually look at some of the differences and compare them and then maybe see which toys we like better. All right, to start off, we're gonna go over the different morphers. If you didn't watch Dino Charge, this is actually how I morph in my show. I don't have a belt buckle that goes, it's morphin' time. I use this Dino Morph Blaster. So this is the Japanese toy, which is actually literally the one, well, okay, this is not the one I used on the show, but it's the same thing. They used the toy for us to use as our morphers. So it was painted, um, this is if you buy it like on eBay or something, or maybe if you're lucky, you can find it on Amazon. It's see-through like this but it's actually painted like this in Dino Charge, and I believe in the Sentai footage as well in Kyoto Ranger. Um, but yeah, this is basically what I use to morph. Same size, I believe there's an on switch somewhere. Uh-huh, oh, there it is, okay. I don't know if there's any, it might be dead though. Okay, that one's dead. Is this one alive? No, I hear something. I'm pretty sure it's dead. It's not making noise. This one, is also dead. Okay, you turn your toys off, save batteries. But they open um, in the show, so basically I go, Dino Charger, ready! And I click this little battery shaped thing, and then I do a spin, and then I open this, and I put the Dino Charger in here, but let me take it out, actually. So this is the Dino Charger for my character when I morph. Uh, and then I put it in, and then basically close it, and then it makes some noise, and then I spin it up, and then I go, Energize, ha! Huh! Unleash the power! And then a dinosaur spirit shoots out over me and then I morph into this dude right here. Uh, yeah, so this, super cool, super familiar with it. I dropped it a ton of times on set because Yoshi uh, was a stunt guy before Power Rangers and he'd like to teach us how to do the gun spins and stuff. See, I don't, I'm not good with this seated, but I'm also left-handed. Getting used to this kind of stuff was fun to do. And then uh, I dropped it a bunch, but I would, I would do it over grass so I wouldn't break them. So yeah, these two are literally the same, just one's painted, one's not. In comparison to the American toy, which is this little dude here, um, I, I'm not a fan of this one for a couple of reasons. One, it's way littler, which I get, it's for kids versus you know being a collectible more towards adults. But two, you can't actually do the morph with this because you need this piece to be connected like it is on this to do that spin because that's part of the choreography for my morph in the show. You can't spin this, there's nothing. And I'm sure they did that so kids wouldn't get their fingers caught and break or get sued. But it's just a bummer that you can't morph with this toy. Uh, but you could do like a flash morph. You're just like, energize, which I did in the show a couple times. Still spins and all of that. Um, but this one also doesn't have the same area. I don't even know how to open this one. Oh, okay. So you have to hit just the tail. In here though, the Dino Charger, I don't actually have one in here. It doesn't fit the normal Dino Charger, so even those are smaller too, versus these again from Japan being the props that we used on the show. So comparing them side by side, the American one's not bad, but I definitely prefer the Japanese version for this particular prop toy collectible. Um, really, again, just because you can't do the morph with this. I don't even mind that it's smaller, again, being marketed more towards kids. But this just feels so right in my hands, being the actual morpher we used. Now, in the Sentai, they actually had holsters for their morphers that they pull out. Ours just appeared out of nowhere, you know, like Power Ranger weapons always do. So the Japanese version of Dino Charge, my season, released a bunch of 10-year anniversary, basically upgraded versions of some of their pre-existing uh, merchandise. And one of them, I was fortunate enough to receive from Toku Collectibles. So big shout out to you guys, thank you. I haven't even opened it yet. So it's in the box. I've only seen pictures of it. Actually, I don't even need the knife. It just opens easily, apparently with the tape. I say that, and now I struggle. Go muscles! Yeah. Oh, a box within a box. All right, so we got box uh, memorial edition. So that's what they're calling the 10 year anniversary of the Japanese versions. Let's open it. La -di -da. It's still holding on somewhere. Ah, ha -ha. So shiny, look at that. Oh yeah, glowing eyeballs, that's fun. Red Ranger, Blue Ranger, Pink Ranger. Um, electrical eyeballs, those are fun. And then you got Dino Chargers on the side, shows the 10 for Kyoto Ranger. So, you know, 
10 year anniversary. I like these suits. They're shinier than the material that was used in Dino Charge. So if you guys watched us get announced at Power Morphicon when we came out on stage in the suits, we were wearing the Japanese suits because they hadn't sized suits for us and made them yet. So you can watch different episodes and you can tell if it's Japanese or original American footage, depending on if it's matte or glossy. Okay, yeah, we did need a knife again. Lay that box down. Ooh. Ah! Ah! Get off. And it comes with dino chargers, yay! This is giant looking. So I've never held this in my hand for mine or another version of it, but this is legit. I mean, yeah, that's that's a, a bigger blaster if my eyes are not mistaken and it's already painted like this one that was custom painted by my friend, Danny. Oh man, I mean, this one has buttons in different spots. I don't know if this came with batteries in it or not. How do you even, how do you do this one? Okay, on this one, there's this little trigger you have to pull down to move, to open the mouth. That apparently is not a thing on the anniversary edition. You can just do it. And then there's buttons back here. So the dino chargers are the same size though. If you look at from this one, Right, that looks the same. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing's happening. Where's the battery going you? I'm so confused. There's no switch. Okay, well anywho, even without the switch, this looks amazing. Maybe I'll add it in another video when I figure out the batteries so you guys can see what it does and do a proper review of this. Again, this is way cooler than the American version and it's, it's pretty, weight wise, even though, I don't know. I, f I feel like this one's still heavier and the paint is a little brighter on this. Um, and it, there's metallic red on the tail and on the tips of this blaster versus kind of a matte finish on this one. But this is sick. All right, so we got the original Japanese version for the Morpher. We have the Memorial Edition for the 10 year anniversary of the Japanese Morpher. And then we have the American Morpher at the end. So some of the key differences that I see between them, this, the red paint on this is a matte finish where anywhere there's red on the Memorial Edition is more of a shiny metallic kind of glossy look. This one also does not come painted. It's kind of translucent while this is solid yellow and black. Um, and apparently this one plays music. This one does too, but the batteries are dead. This one, as far as I'm aware, does not play any music at all. Uh, it's just basically to open and put dino chargers in. These two both use the same size dino charger as well. Again, Japanese toys, what we use in the show to go, dino charger, ready, click, and then they'd add special effects. Um, yeah, this one, I don't have the dino charger in here, but it's a little tinier toy. I'm curious, which one is your favorite out of the three morphers? For me, definitely the Memorial Edition. All right, guys, now we're on to the action figures. So on my left, we have the Hasbro lightning figures, which I believe I was in the first wave of the Hasbro toys. So you can see they actually put my face on the mold. I did not get scanned for this. It was just based off of a picture. I think it's one of my prints where I'm just standing there for promotional work. I think it looks pretty good. They even got the little mole above my left eyebrow on that toy from the picture. And so the toy itself comes with the sword, the blaster, and it comes with the helmet and as well as my head to switch out with it. So these are two of the same toy. You get both pieces in the package. So I just opened two of them so you could see one morphed and one uh, half more or helmetless, still morphed, but helmetless. And then to my right, we have the SH Figuarts. So right here is the original Figuart that came out when the Japanese version dropped. And then this is also part of that 10 year memorial uh, addition that we saw in the blasters, but of the toy. So I'm gonna open these two and then we can pair them side by side with these two and see what we like better, you know? There we go, cool. So, so right off the bat, you can see that this is a thinner version versus the Power Ranger version, a little more sleek and then a little tinier too. So the blaster in the American version doesn't have any red on it. They actually painted the red detail onto this blaster. I've had other figure arts where I've tried popping off the heads and I've broken them on like two different figures. So I'm not gonna remove the head. These ones are more interchangeable, they're easier. So I actually feel like they're a little more solid versus this. I mean, this is really cool, really poseable, but I have found it to be a little more delicate than the lightning figures. And then we have the sword versus the American sword. 
This one has a bit of a gold hue to it versus yellow, and I like the gold better. Um, again, there's more design details I find on the Figuart versus the American version. And then it comes with different arm attachments. Again, I'm not gonna pop them off because I've broken these. So you can put on the Dino Steel, which is actually what's on in the shirt that I'm wearing, funny enough. And uh, that's basically one of the power-ups that I do in the show. Um, this did not come with the Dino Steel. But we also have the Dino, or the T-Rex Smasher. So this is a weapon. I actually have a wooden replica that my buddy made for me. And then, so this, oh, look, it opens too. So he puts it on and he punches bad guys with it really hard, I guess. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of different hand gestures that you can attach. Again, not going to because maybe it's not that delicate and I'm just too much of a brute. And there's even a tiny dino charger. Whoa, it's like the size of an ant. Can you even see that? I don't know. It's smaller than a grain of rice. So they're about similar height-ish, but you can see this one worked out and went through a bulking phase and this one went on a cutting phase. So this one's a bit more beefy. This guy's a little skinnier, but uh, both really clean aesthetic. Um, both pretty flexible. I mean, who stretches more? Okay, yeah, you both put in the work. Okay, can you do side splits? Okay, okay, pretty good, pretty good. Can you do the side splits? Yeah, yeah, okay. Between the American version so far, haven't opened the Memorial Edition and the Japanese version of the figure art, I like the American versions because they actually put the actors' heads on them. And that's really cool to me. I, I think, it, I'm, I'm just so honored to actually have an action figure, not just of generic Red Ranger from Dino Charge, but literally me with a different haircut right now in the Lightning figures. We're gonna open up the Memorial Edition of Kyoru Red. Oh. Um, yeah, I can't read that. So here's the back of the box, by the way. So you see different action poses. Shows him with weapons. I'm assuming weapons are in here, just not on the clear plastic like the other Japanese figure, figure arts. Oh, yeah, he's like taped in there. Oh, no, no, just kidding, he's not. He's just, why is this tape even on of it? What is this even accomplishing? So this is cool. This is shimmery. I like when they add the metallic to the toys. So um, he's pretty movable in the chest. This one is movable at the hips, but this guy is movable at the hips and then can arch more because there's an extra joint it looks like that they added for mobility. This guy feels more solid than the original figure art, but in comparison to the American version, still a little shorter, but and then, oh, also, I just noticed the shoulder pad. See the red on the front? They don't carry the red onto the back of the shoulder pad, but this one has it on the front and the back. I feel like the Japanese version paid more attention to detail um, for some of the cleaner details on the suit design. This belt buckle does not move, though, like these ones. Um, and then these belt buckles, they have that little design inside the belt. Again, that's missing. They just have the drawing. It's gray and kind of clear, though on this. And then let's look at some of the props that came with the Memorial Edition. Okay, you gotta, this guy throws hands, you know what I'm saying? Cause all the hands, yeah, you get it. I'm not gonna take those out cause that's too much. There's also a dino charger in there as well. So another ant sized dino charger. And then we got another sword, which looks longer than that sword. And then a blaster also with a lot of detail. And then we got another blaster here, which is kind of like that folded to connect to something. So maybe we can, at least look at the weapons. Getting out this sword. Yeah, this is bigger than that. So this sword just basically takes out the <laughs> Hasbro American version as well as the original figure art. Um, I think this design is amazing. So I'm gonna lose that. We're gonna give me this awesome sword instead. <laughs> and then the blaster. Ah, the hands. It's like Master Hand and Super Smash Brothers. You know, they're all coming at you. Um, if you Compare the blaster. Oh, I dropped the sword. So here's the original figure art. The new blaster is also bigger, kind of like the Memorial Edition one. Detail wise, oh, it actually spins. So this one's solid. And the figure art, you can see, you can actually spin the little, I don't know, can you see that? It spins, it spins. That's legit. It doesn't actually open though. I wonder if you can put a dino charger in it. Can you put a dino charger in this one? No, dino charger doesn't fit in that. The American one, again, doesn't have as much detail, but let's get the dino charger out too, just to make sure it's the same size or not. Whoa, they actually, so this one, again, super tiny, but they actually put the little T-Rex in it. So it's like 
<laughs> the full size dyno charger. It looks like you can actually put the dyno charger in here. I'm gonna get it stuck and never see it again. No, I went in. Does it come out though? It does. Okay, well, it doesn't open, like the, the tail doesn't go down, but you can legit put a dyno charger in the figure art. So to recap the differences, again, on the left, we have the Hasbro Lightning Collection, then we have the figure art Japanese versions to the right. Biggest difference I see is the level of detail, not just on the suits in the Japanese version, but also on their weaponry. There's more paint detail, um, there's more suit design with like the nose of the T-Rex going across the chest, and there's more articulation in especially the Memorial Edition versus the Lightning figures. Now what I do like about the Lightning figures is they feel more sturdy to me. If I were actually to play with these as a kid or to wanna to collect them, I don't feel like I'd break them as easily. I have broken at least two of the original figure arts trying to pop the head off. So I just, I don't switch out the hands and I've broken an arm on it before. And that's just me maybe, cause I'm pretty rough, but popping the heads off on this, because again, the lightning figure comes with the civilian head as well as the helmet. These just come helmeted as they are. So I love the fact that you can see the detail on the faces, but then that detail is more lacking on the actual suit and the weapons that come with them. But the detail level, especially on the Memorial Edition, is ridiculous. I mean, you can literally put that ant-sized dino charger into the blaster and to the sword, which is amazing. Yeah, so there you go. What figure do you like the most? Is it the original figure art, the Memorial Edition, or do we like the lightning figures? All right, guys, so we have compared action figures, but now if you wanna see me versus my action figure, watch this video.